Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Listen now for a word from God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is Easter afternoon. The hymns have been sung. The eggs are all hunted. The meal has been shared and naps have been taken. And now the thoughts of all the people who have gathered begin to turn toward the upcoming week. I wonder why my boss wanted to have that meeting with me. I bet I did awful on that test. I haven't heard back from the doctor about those test results yet. Is no news good news? How will I get everything done? The first disciples, just like us, must have had many thoughts running through their minds on that first Easter day. The disciples were in a locked room for fear of the Jews. Now remember that the disciples were Jews. This line is very context-specific. The Gospel according to John was written late in the first century to a specific Christian community. That community was experiencing a painful separation from the Jewish society to which they had once belonged. They were living in a time of anger and fear, and their entire worldview was colored by that context. The disciples were cowering in that locked house for fear of the Jews on the day of resurrection, but not because they feared Jewish persecution. That is a later theme. However, they had just seen their Lord crucified by Roman leadership and then resurrected. That would certainly induce a little fear. And these disciples' fears were realistic. They lived in the Pax Romana, this peaceful Roman rule, which was maintained through great oppression. They had just seen a person they loved crucified, and they fear that they may be next. We have fears, too, and they are just as realistic We wonder about the state of health care in our nation. Some applauded the Affordable Health Care Act, and some were fearful of its consequences. And now, some applaud its reform, and others are fearful of those consequences. Some fear immigrants and want to go to great lengths to keep people with a different skin color or religion or language out of the United States. Others fear the persecution and oppression of newcomers and of their families and friends who peacefully contribute to the greater good of society. Some believe that guns are a great evil and perpetuate cycles of violence and power Others believe 
that free access to purchase and carry guns is an inherent right and will make our society safer. Some people have begun avoiding public spaces and large gatherings of people for fear of terrorists. The fears of those early Christ followers that first Easter day and our own fears are realistic ones, no matter which side of an argument you are on. According to John's Gospel, in that fearful locked house, the same day as his resurrection, Jesus appeared to the disciples. We don't know which disciples were there. I don't believe it was Mary Magdalene who had already encountered the risen Christ, or that it was Peter or the other disciple who had been to the empty tomb to whom Mary had announced, I have seen the Lord. But into that locked house, where any number of disciples were cowering, Jesus appeared right in the middle of their fears. He showed them his wounds, proving he wasn't a ghost, and he greeted them with the familiar words, Peace be with you. Those words, peace be with you, that was a common greeting, not something that would really induce much thought. But then Jesus insistently said them again. The first time they were a simple greeting, but when said twice, those words gather our attention. They are a fulfillment of a promise Jesus made before he died. And they are a powerful benediction that introduces the commission Jesus is about to speak. Now, we like to think that peace means tranquility, with no conflict. But clearly that definition doesn't work in this situation. Jesus must have meant something else another kind of peace. Susan Eastman states, clearly he brings a peace that originates from an enigmatic source beyond the status quo of the Roman Empire. Jesus is offering a different peace than the oppressive order of the Pax Romana. And this is also a peace that is issued to us for tranquility and the absence of conflict will surely elude us when we talk about guns and health care and immigration and terrorism and public policy. This is a peace that looks like witnessing to Jesus Christ, sharing the story of his life and his love and sharing our own story of how we are participants in God's story. This is a piece that shows up to a ragtag bunch of disciples locked in a room for their fear. And it shows up to us, locked in our fear, and yet still commissioned for a purpose. Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And I think that's a really weird thing. Jesus, I imagine, is blowing in their faces. <sighs> right after his resurrection, that very same day, he shows up in the middle of their terror and blows in their faces. In our liturgical calendar, which is based off of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Pentecost is removed in time from the resurrection. That's why we're celebrating it today instead of clear back on Easter. But in John's Gospel, Jesus shows up and breathes on them immediately. And the word breath is emphaseo in Greek. It shows up only here in the entire New Testament. 
but it is a Greek word that brings up the images of the Ruach from creation. If you remember in the creation stories when God's spirit hovered over the waters, or when God took dirt from the earth and breathed life into it, that is the Ruach. It is life and breath. It's the same life and breath that God breathed into the dry bones in Ezekiel's vision. Here, Jesus fulfilled another promise. He gave the disciples an advocate to be with them as they were sent out into the world. And it's a full parallel. God sending Jesus into the world and Jesus sending us into the world. But this is not a tranquil proposition. Into that locked room, Jesus dared to enter their locked hearts. He showed them his wounds and commissioned them and commissions us because the Spirit is with us. We do not stand alone in our attempts to follow Christ. Guided by the Spirit, we enact what God alone can do. This church does not exist for itself, but for the sake of the world for which Christ lived, loved, and died. What we do in worship, study, and fellowship is for the purpose of equipping us to serve the world in all its brokenness and need. This building is not meant to be a locked room where Jesus appears in the midst of our fear. We have received the Spirit. Jesus has breathed new life into us, individually and collectively. Jesus has conquered death, and we are commissioned and sent out into the world, supported by the Holy Spirit to share God's peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Amen.